Hello folks. Would you believe it if I told you that we are not in the U.S. anymore? Well, technically I'm right, technically I'm wrong. We're still in the state of Oklahoma, but this is a part of Oklahoma, one of many parts of Oklahoma, where U.S. law doesn't strictly apply. You see, we are in what's known as Chickasaw Nation. Back in the olden times, Native Americans inhabited a large swath of this country. I mean, they were the only people here before the European settlers showed up. Among these, when contacted, were the five civilized tribes. In the hopes to be just eventually left alone, these five tribes adopted certain Western customs while still being able to retain more of their traditions. Sadly, it didn't work out for these five tribes. In the 1830s, they were forcibly relocated away from their homelands in the southeast to Oklahoma, then known as Indian Territory. It was a land they were not comfortable with, a land far away from home. And at this point in American history, it wasn't very desirable land. Many of the tribes who were forced onto this Indian Territory were granted a reservation, a small patch of land. The Chickasaw tribe, known then as the Strong Warriors from, I guess, the lands east of the Mississippi River, northern Mississippi, Tennessee, Alabama, that area. They were relocated onto the land in South Central Oklahoma. Today in Oklahoma, the Native American tribes that were relocated here forcibly, I want to put emphasis on that, that was an unfortunate time in American history. These Native tribes, they still live here under their own seemingly modern Native American nations. The Chickasaw tribe today has about a little over 60,000 members. And today we're going to be exploring one of these towns in the Chickasaw Nation, which holds a sense of cultural significance. And today's goal, I don't really know if we have many, you know, concrete things, but our goal here today is just to understand the Chickasaw way of life. Of those five tribes, the Chickasaw they're not really as known as, well, you may have heard of the Cherokee tribe or the Seminole tribe. Yeah, the Chickasaw in comparison, they aren't as well known to national standards of knowledge. So we're going to give them a little spotlight to admire, to understand, and to pay respect to the Chickasaw culture. So welcome one and all to the sleepy town of Sulphur, Oklahoma. This is tried and true Chickasaw country, but it's just looking like a small town like any other. And that's the thing. A lot of these small towns in these native nations or reservations, they look the same as anywhere outside. Like if there weren't all these murals and artwork depicting the culture of the Chickasaw, You'd be convinced this is just some other American town in the middle of Oklahoma. So I'm almost certain you're wondering, okay, town of Sulphur, nice little quaint town, but what does it have to do? What's the significance to the Chickasaw culture? Why did I choose the town of Sulphur over everywhere else in Chickasaw Nation? Well, it just so happens that right nearby are two things, which I won't reveal now, but two important things that contribute to the legacy of the Chickasaw Nation that we should really explore here on The Coverage Project. This work of water behind us looks pretty, but it smells gross. It's almost like someone farted all around this area. And that's because this water has a tinge of sulfur in it. That's where sulfur gets its name, from the waters that are around this area in the Chickasaw National Recreation Area. But at the same time, the water found here in this area that supposedly smells putrid is said to have some healing properties. And that's what attracted a lot of settlers coming west 
here to think of, hey, you know what, let's preserve this area. Originally known as Hot Springs Reservation, this protected area spanning from 1902 to the modern day has withstood the test of time being preserved, now being called the Chickasaw National Recreation Area. And it's full of these springs like this, full of other bodies of water. There will be more of the Chickasaw National Recreation Area. I want to finish that at the end of today because where we are now is going to close soon. So I decided, let's go here first. This is the Chickasaw Cultural Center. I guess you could call this the epicenter of Chickasaw cultural life. As you can see here, there are signs of Chickasaw culture still being intact from the very intricate artwork like the ones found on these discs. Beautiful artwork there. Then another sign you can see is the Chickasaw language being utilized here in this cultural center. The sign here, well, it has the Chickasaw language above English. Now that's a way to prioritize your native language. Put it above English. The Chickasaw people, or as I just learned right now, the Chickasha people, are a very strong group. Having to weather the difficulties of just trying to be recognized as a tribe as the U.S. gained a lot more territory and power. If a museum's not enough for you, well, look at this. There is an actual replica of a Chickasaw village. I say we go down and check that out. This is so cool. Imagine hundreds of years ago when there was no real danger imminent from European settlement. You being a Chickasaw member and witnessing the sacred traditional council rites and the meetings that would go on in this house. Now, of course, this large building that we just went into is the most prominent house, and it played an important role in the tribal ceremonies of the Chickasaw. But of course, ordinary people are not going to live in this house. There are plenty of other houses, both for warmth and for cooling off in various seasons. This was a house that was designed for warmth during the winter. Very insulating, I'd assume. Each traditional Chickasaw village, it was important to have an open field, a plaza, for public events. Things that the ordinary people could see. Maybe sporting events, games, or maybe just announcements. And over here, we have a ceremonial mound. This is where the sacred fire was to be burned. It was important to have a food source for the village. And what was more tantamount to the Chickasaw than the three sisters? Corn, beans, and squash. 
Honestly, what a great experience. It's one thing to read about something or to look at exhibits in the museum, but it's a whole nother thing when you're immersed, when you see it with your own eyes, what a tribal village might have looked like. All right, to cap off our day here in Sulphur, Oklahoma, we are back in the Chickasaw National Recreation Area. Once you walk far enough into these dense woodlands, you find these springs. The water springs out from underground and makes for a nice relaxing little stream. And it's so secluded, it's like you're one with nature, all alone. It's just you and the woods and the water. There's actually two of these springs in this recreation area, or at least this part of it. There's Antelope Springs, which we saw, and then let me see if I can do a little trick. Yes, we teleported here to Buffalo Springs, or as the Chickasaw called it, Yonoshkuli. And it wasn't just humans who flocked to this spring. Buffalo, true to the name Buffalo Springs, like to bathe in the spring to get away from all the bugs and all the critters. If you look closely, the water's bubbling, and sometimes it makes a bubbling sound. That's all the pockets of air coming from underground to the surface. So yes, between Antelope Springs, Buffalo Springs, you can find many different natural springs here. It's a lot like hot springs in Arkansas. Remember when we visited there? These are all natural formations, minus all the masonry and stone working around it. These were natural springs. And so when the Chickasaw arrived here forcibly, they didn't want to be here. They had no choice. They were lucky enough to find an area that kind of resembled their homelands. This is a tribe which endured so much hardship in the effort and the journey to get tribal recognition from the United States. This was the tribe that also had so much strength. This was the tribe that repelled Hernando de Soto and the Spanish expeditionary force that first arrived at their homelands, way before the British or French or the United States. So the Chickasaw always find a way to conquer hardship and retain their tribal identity, their culture. This is just one tribe of many in the state of Oklahoma. As much as I would like to go into a deep dive about every tribe here in Oklahoma, every tribe in the US, we have limited time. I just feel lucky that we were able to come to this town in Chickasaw Nation. Please, I would love nothing more than to explore the cultural beauty of all these native cultures. As we continue forth on our long Frontier Americana expedition, there will be plenty more places we go to that shine a, a nice light on the native cultures in North America. But yeah, it was a lovely time paying tribute to a tribe which had to adapt to the changing environment with standards set by a settler population and have now today come out in a cultural renaissance. So good on them and I wish the Chickasaw the best of luck. I would like to return to the Chickasaw Nation eventually in time. I don't know when that would be, but it would be fun to go to another little town. So with that said, Oklahoma's done. We move on to our next state here on the Frontier Americana Tour. So standing in front of Buffalo Springs, in the outskirts of Sulphur, Oklahoma, in Chickasaw Nation. More travels to come. I will see you at the next location. No way. That's an armadillo.